We have about 600, 650. Actually, for such a big undergrad, relative, relatively normal size law school. Yeah. Does the huge undergraduate population have an impact on the culture? Mm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I, maybe half of our students were undergrads at OSU. I mean, I'm making up a number, but just from seeing it. We draw a lot of people from schools like Notre Dame that already had a football culture too. Um, yeah, it's it's it. I, I think fine. I think a lot of them, if you look, went to a big school too. I mean, Ohio State's a monster, but if you went to any school, it's twenty or thirty thousand. They're all com kind of comparable. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, we see some students that it's enough of a difference for them. He was an attorney um, that actually passed away not that long ago. Um, private practice did pretty well, obviously, and made a very large donation to the law school. I'm thinking 30. I'm thinking at, at, at 10 years, a handful of years ago, too. Yeah. Well, this is a nice building. I've never been, I've been to Milwaukee once before, so first time in this building. To where? Is that in Ohio? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, yeah. Okay, okay. We're um, we've lived in Columbus for about five years, so not incredibly familiar with that area. I'm gonna talk about them a bit. Um, I think the complexity of the things. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about, but again, I, I, I did too. <laughs> check, check, one, two, check. Yeah. Figure out how to use it. You know, it, 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 and it messed up. Yeah, you're right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay. What about the video? It's already going? Or, okay. Okay, okay. I didn't say anything bad, did I? We didn't say anything bad, did we? Well, everyone, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. They tell me that we've been live for a couple of minutes, so I hope no one said anything very incriminating on the camera. Um, first off, thank you all for being here. I wasn't really sure what kind of crowd would show up for this. Um, we'll talk a little bit about my title in a minute. I hope that's not exactly what sucked everybody in, but it may have been. Um, and first off, my name is Thomas Sneed. I'm going to talk a little bit more about myself in just a couple minutes. The title, I'm going to talk about again in a couple minutes. But first off, I have an important question for the crowd. Who all drove here to get here this weekend? Okay. I remember going to summer camp a couple years ago when I was a little bit younger. And one of the big things, they always awarded a prize at summer camp for maybe who came the farthest to summer camp. I want to know who drove the farthest. I drove eight and a half hours yesterday by myself, and it was horrible. <laughs> Can anybody beat me? <laughs> How far did you go, sir? I started Knoxville, drove to Oh, my God. You, you may win. You may win. <laughs> well, yes, sir. Oh, well, well. <laughs> okay, okay, you win, you win. I, the reason I drove, I was, I'm coming from Columbus, Ohio. I was going to come with my wife and son. He's 13 months old. He got sick. It ended up being me solo. So that's why I ended up driving instead of flying. But let me top you, sir. Last weekend, we drove to Atlanta. About a nine-hour drive, it took us 12 with the 13-month-old who 50 minutes into the trip started screaming bloody murder 
My wife looked at me and goes, why aren't we flying? <laughs> when we had discussed that ad nauseum for weeks. So, so anyway, I just, I just wanted to get that opinion. Um, Chicago wasn't that bad yesterday. It was actually a pretty good drive up. So back to the title of my talk today, A Flip Camera, Lady Gaga, and the Tax Courts. I know Lady Gaga may have gotten some of you all in here. I promise I'm not Lady Gaga. I may not be as entertaining. I'm going to do my best. But every one of those things I am going to talk about today in conjunction with my discussion of my use of technology in the classroom. So to go ahead and get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about today's agenda. Actually, I want to let somebody else talk about today's agenda for me. My name is Lady Gaga, and since Thomas used my name in the title of his presentation, I figured it was the least I could do to provide a brief introduction for what he will be talking about today. The topic for this hour will be technology in the classroom. First, our speaker will talk about his background, and then move on to why he decided to increase the amount of technology he included in his classes. Thomas used his winter 2011 advanced legal research class as a case study, and they ended up being very willing participants. After this introduction, he is going to talk about the technologies he utilized, including the pros and cons of each. Thomas will do plenty of talking, but your feedback, comments, and questions are welcome and very much appreciated. Thanks for letting me visit with you for a few minutes, but I must now head out to explore the wonderful city of Milwaukee. I will turn things back over to Thomas, and I hope to have a great day. <laughs> okay, we are going to talk much more about what you just saw in a couple minutes, but I did want her to do a little bit of introduction. I figured she deserved that. I am going to talk a little bit about my background. I think it's important after talking to some of the people in the crowd a little bit about what I do. I want to talk about why I decided to use the technologies that I did. And then finally, I'm going to talk about what I did, what I used in my class, what I thought was good about it, what I thought was bad about it. And like Lady Gaga just said, please speak. I, from just talking with a couple of you all, you have some great experiences. You're using things also. For some of these things, I'm definitely not a master at it. It's more something I've tried. Your experiences, any thoughts you've had, throw them out there. To me, that's what this is for. Like she said, I could talk all day long. You guys may have even better opinions than I do. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, my background. I'm currently a reference librarian at the Moritz College of Law at Ohio State University. I've been doing this for about three and a half years. Um, prior to that, I was a law clerk for a trial court judge in western Kentucky, rather small town. Practiced law for about five years in private practice, basically doing real estate work. Moved to Ohio, actually worked for the Department of Transportation for a while, doing eminent domain work. That was some fun stuff. And then, obviously, now I'm at the Moritz College of Law. We actually, as librarians, we get to do a lot of stuff. We're given the opportunity to do a lot of things in the library. It's a great opportunity. One of the things that I've enjoyed the most is actually the teaching opportunity that I've had. I've been allowed to teach an introduction to legal research class to 1Ls, usually lasting about six weeks in the fall semester. We all know about 1Ls, talking with the gentlemen over here, they're all kind of like deers in the headlight. We get them that first six weeks, so we definitely see that. And then I've also had the opportunity to teach an advanced legal research class, focusing primarily on business and tax information. That's what I'm going to be talking most about today. So that's a little bit about my background. I know you guys are coming from all different types of backgrounds. When I've talked about some of these things before, I've been in front of librarian crowds. I've been in front of just all over the place crowds. So I know this is a much different crowd generated basically from law schools. So again, feedback. Talk to me. Tell me what you think. So why did I decide to add certain bits of technology into the classroom? First off, I did want to try to get a more active classroom. I wanted to increase engagement in the classroom. Like I've said a couple of times, Lady Gaga said, I can talk all day long. That's not going to do any good. They're going to tune me out. They're going to start with their computers. They're going to be Facebooking. Who knows what else may happen? I want the class to talk also. So 
I've always had pretty good luck with that. I don't know why the first years, the advanced students, they've always been pretty good about giving me feedback, talking in class, haven't been too bashful about answering questions. Fingers crossed, maybe I've been really lucky in that area. But it could always be better. I could always do something to try to get more from the students. So I decided to try a few things that we're going to talk about today. Second off, I have been a part of an instructor development program through the Ohio State University main libraries. Essentially, it's a group of other librarians around campus that have gotten together. We were to put together a project that had something to do with e-learning. I got into it. I had an idea for when it first began. And then I decided to just build on it and build on it and try more things. So actually, in a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing some type of presentation on essentially the same thing again for our OSU library. So there was some type of impetus to actually do this. And then finally, why not? Why not try something new? That was basically what I did when I started with this. I was like, you know, why not? It can't hurt. At worst, it may fail. At best, it may actually amount to something useful. When I've talked about these things with other people before, some pedagogical issues have come up. Essentially, why are you doing this? Um, what do you plan to get out of this? How useful do you think this is going to be? And my first response is, I don't know. Um, when I started doing these things, it was as much maybe for me to say, hey, let's try something different. Let's give this a shot. As I got into it, as I started talking to students about it, started talking with other, other faculty, other librarians, I started getting some good responses pedagogically from students who are like, you know, we appreciated you trying something different. It did seem to enlighten it a bit. As the gentleman over here told me, he said, my goodness, how do you make legal research exciting? Well, maybe some of this did a little bit. Who knows? But I did get some positive feedback for the pedagogical issues with this. And then also, I kind of view what I did as a marketing opportunity. The library, we know that library adds lots of good value to the law school, but maybe if I can bring that one student sitting in the very back who never comes into the library, who's never been much of a library user, if I can do something to make maybe me seem more approachable, to make the library seem more approachable, fabulous. We've got that one person. Maybe you're teaching something else. If maybe you could do something that attempts to market what you're doing a little bit more, make it more approachable to that one student, that's fabulous. So that's some of the things that I've been thinking about when I did that. But essentially, it's just a big, why not? Why not give it a shot? Let's see what happens with it. A little bit about my case study that I actually used. I mentioned earlier, I taught an introduction to legal research class in the fall, but then in the winter semester, I would teach an advanced legal research on business and tax topics. I've taught this class a couple of times before. So the information that I'm talking about, I'm pretty familiar with. I've dealt with it before. I know what I want to do with it. I know where I want to go with it. This wasn't something that was brand new, a new topic to me. That may have made it a little more difficult to work some of these things in. This is a one credit course. It meets once a week for the entire semester. So I've essentially got 50 minutes. One of the big things with this class, these are second and third year students. I usually had about 18 or so, which was a full class. So I had a pretty good number for this type of legal research class. These students generally had had an introduction to legal research class. So they should in some way be proficient. I put the question mark there with major legal databases. They should know something about Westlaw and Lexis. They should generally know something about legal research, or at least they think they do. So I'm not dealing with those 1Ls. I knew I was dealing with a group that probably knew a little bit about what they were doing. And I thought this would be a good chance to try to pull more out of them. Finally, we were definitely covering resources that were unfamiliar to the students. In the business end, surprisingly, a lot of government websites were unfamiliar, things like Hoover's, BNA. Even though they may have access to these, a lot of them didn't know too much about them. On the tax end, dealing with things like CCH, RIA, blank stares. They had never dealt with these unless they were specifically dealing with tax areas. A lot of times they'd never dealt with these databases. So it always surprised me when we talk about something new. A lot of times they'd not heard of it before. So I had some somewhat experienced students. I'm talking about new topics for them. And I had a pretty small class. So this seemed to work out pretty well for a situation to try some new things. So what did I try in class that I had used before? 
These are things that I've used in all my classes before. They were not new to this specific class. Obviously, it was using some type of course management system. At Ohio State, we have one called Carmen. Actually, not that prevalent at the law school. It's usually more for undergrad, grad students. Not so much at the law school because we've all been sucked in by twin. We all use the Westlaw product, or I say all. Most people use the Westlaw product. Twin is what we use for our course management system. I think we do have some professors that use the Lexis product that's out there, the web courses, but Twin seems to be the prevalent resource of choice. Do I have any questions? Okay. We also have what I'll call smart classrooms. And talking around this morning, I think when I say smart classroom, that means something different to a lot of different people. Um, for me, a smart classroom meant I essentially had to have access to what we have in here. Um, some smart classrooms may include some type of board they can write on, some more advanced types of smart classrooms. But I've always used that. I've always used some type of PowerPoint. I've always used some type of presentation software. And I mention this because as I walk through the building, as I talk with faculty at the law school, not everybody uses this type of so software. There may be some traditional professors that are using what I had when I was in law school. Lecture, Blackboard, just the regular discussion. Um, I have no problem with PowerPoint. I stick them on twin. I let the students have access to what I've done. Um, no problem with that. I know that is a discussion out there, um, but I just think for my stuff it works fine. So I always have used that. And then I mentioned the laptops. Um, I have no problem with students bringing laptops. We're going to be doing an awful lot of in-class work using electronic databases. It wouldn't make sense if they did not bring their laptops, if they did not bring their computers, because we're just doing so much in-class work. So these were things I've always used. I no, no question we were going to use them in class. Um, these were not part of what I considered my test to see what types of technology may work in the classroom. So what type of things did I use? And I'm going to start at the beginning and then move down to the ones that essentially I liked better. And I am going to talk about these, talk about how much I use them, and talk about some of the pros and cons. And this is when whatever you guys have experienced, that would be fabulous. I think that's going to add to our conversation quite a bit. First one, I use clickers. I know when I was getting ready to start, I heard a few people kind of talk about this. Um, I think clickers draws a lot of response from a lot of people. I'm not going to talk too much about the background on it. I think most people know what clickers are. They know what the turning technology is. I'm going to talk a little bit about my pros and cons with the experience. I use clickers once in this class. I've used clickers before. I think the cons always popped up bigger for me, and I may have just essentially bailed on it too early. The thing about clickers, they are familiar. I think all of your students, probably everybody in here, has been at something where they've used some type of clicker technology, some type of quick response. It's pretty easy to use, at least it's PowerPoint. You can set it up pretty quick. In that area, it's not that bad to use. Those are essentially the pros for it. I think there's some bigger cons with it that I've had a problem with. And the thing with clickers, I kind of wonder if it's me and not necessarily the system. And that very well could be the case. I've always had, when I've used clickers, the two times when I've been in situations where clickers have been used in other cases, it's more ended discussion than led to more discussion. And I don't know if that goes with my other point, where it may lend itself better to certain topics. And I'll explain a little bit. When I put a question out there using the clicker technology, a lot of times it was almost to just see if they've had any type of understanding of what we've talked about. Like, what is the answer to X, A, B, or C? How am I going to get much more discussion out of that? I may be able to find out if they got the concept, if they understand B is the right answer, we can move on. What I really want to do is generate some discussion. And I had trouble generating discussion. It ended up, when I would put a question up there, it would kind of die, and it would be over with, and be like, wow, I spent 15 minutes on that for 10 seconds. It never seemed to work as well as I wanted to. I've talked with some other people about clickers. Maybe at some law schools they were almost graded on clickers. If they, if they could keep track, they kept track of who had each clicker. And when they gave a response, if it was wrong, it could be a grade in class, and it frightened the students. So I've heard a lot of different stories about clickers. 
I have just kind of moved on from it and thought, you know, I'm getting pretty good discussion in class. I think I'm going to move away from this particular type of technology. Who in here has had a good or bad experience with clickers? Anybody want to share it? Get something from the crowd. Sir, you, I think you were talking earlier about it. Um, yeah, and, and in fact, one that I did this year that really helped me I divided the students into teams. Hmm. So in the old days, I sort of would say, um, the honor code is an effect, and you know, your answer mm -hmm. is your answer. Uh, and that was always awkward because of some mm -hmm. chattering. Uh, but this year, because of some current and all the other stuff that were happening out there, I would divide the students into teams. And that's a good discussion. A lot of times with our in-class work, we will, I'll let them work in teams. So I don't have any problem with that. That's, that's a good point. That's helpful. I may, I may keep that in the past. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I noticed that with the use of the clicker technology, um, the discussion was a lot of times uh, a lot more active based on use of these clickers for courses like constitutional law mm -hmm. and things that dealt with issues that mm -hmm. really were polarizing. Um, you know, for tax law or something like that, you're going to kind of have more of a procedural, how do you do this, is this right or wrong, mm -hmm. and that's it. But um, the, the other thing that tended to sort of get a real conversation going was when we um, delved a little deeper into the turning point mm -hmm. software and started using demographic slides, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was able, people could still keep their anonymity, but you were able to see which, what groups of, subgroups of people, of students, were mm -hmm. answering which questions which way and then talk about that. You brought up two good points. The first one, again, it's the topic. Um, as I stroll through the law school, we have an evidence professor that actually uses some of the stuff I'm talking about today. And I can see evidence being a great topic to keep a discussion going with a yes or no clicker question. Um, legal research, mm, maybe not. We're a totally different type of situation. And also, the more in-depth issues with Turning Point, yes, there, are, there is a lot on there. But with what I was doing, I wanted to keep it kind of quick and simple. What you're dealing with is a little bit more advanced. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And, and at least, yes, and, and Bruce Johnson is kind of smiling a little bit. Um, yes, and we would have to, I'd have to gather them up, take them in, pass them out, pick them back up, and bring them back in. So that, maybe it's me. I mean, maybe Clickers is me. Maybe I'm a little lazy. I don't want to take them up every time. I don't want to put the in-depth thought into the conversation to think about the questions. So that very well could be. Go ahead, question. Well, It, it was all in the library, but um, that is me being a little lazy. Yeah, you're right. It would be telling them I want to do it, going and getting it, and then getting it together. So there was a little bit more than them already having them. I know at some schools, I think everybody gets a clicker pretty early on, so it's a little different. And I got you and you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I've used them for years in legal in teaching legal ethics, so mm -hmm. I would I would mirror the comment that mm -hmm. if it's a, a a topic where there's difference of opinion. And I also used it exactly as you described, three-person teams. So they had to have the dialogue that you wouldn't otherwise have. And I've used it in lecture halls with as many as five or six hundred. Wow. Because if you, the, your teams get bigger mm -hmm. based on your number of clickers. But it takes a large lecture hall and all of a sudden mm -hmm. gives you some seminar dialogue. Yes, and, and you guys are all hitting on the big point. I think it's a subject thing. I think in legal ethics, my goodness, yes. I mean, I can see a yes-no question going on for days. That's an excellent point. Yes, sir. Um, one of the things we do, obviously a little bit different because we use it off the laptop. Mm -hmm. We're using Turning Point mm -hmm. off the laptop. Mm -hmm. So in a legal research class, I actually use them fairly extensively for short answer questions wow. in yeah. citation. So we're teaching citation. They have to do a cite. They put it mm -hmm. in. I'm not going to see an instant result on the screen, but I'm going to be able to go back and print it. Um, we use it for short answer, and we're trying to get that across our, our curriculum in a sense. We're trying to get some of our faculty in their core subjects to do a short answer question mm -hmm. where they'll have a model answer, but they won't have to grade it. It'll go back to the legal writing professor who will then be dealing with a, a, a problem set that's actually in torts or in contracts with a model answer, but they can look at the results and see where the problems the students are having, whether mm -hmm. it's grammar, structure, or pieces. 
in that in that development piece. And you guys are using them for that situation. Are they understanding what we're talking about? And it's it's working well for you all. It sounds like. Right. The other thing I mentioned, I have one faculty member who I uh, a new faculty member uh, who basically because we capture every class, um, mm -hmm. she actually would go in before the day before class or a couple days before class. She do a little 10 minute vignette uh, where she would t take whatever she was teaching the elements so she would have the readings they now will have watched her she would mm -hmm. come in and she would ask her questions based upon what she wanted the students mm -hmm. to understand out of the section and then her class would sort of deviate based upon what the understanding was okay. so in a sense she was looking at the, the the clickers as a way to see her her lecturette and their readings what they were actually comprehending to restructure her class Okay. Good. Good. I'm, I'm going to take one more, and then we're kind of. I, I won't get to my other stuff. Yes, ma'am. Um, I didn't actually oh, hear you teaching. I distributed them to faculty members. Okay. Um, but I believe that the students are getting the feedback that in many classes the clickers will allow students who have a divergent opinion to see that hmm. other people may also hmm. have that opinion and then feel freer mm -hmm. to discuss it. So it brings out. And somewhat anonymous, or not somewhat anonymous. It's anonymous unless there's two people in class. Um, so yes, yes. And I, I think I think from all of these comments, the one thing we picked up is that they do have a use. My use for what I'm teaching may not be the perfect use, but for other classes where the subject works well, where you can get groups together, clickers definitely have a use. And it just it just takes a little bit of time to work it out. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. OK, this one I won't spend a ton of time on. Um, I tried to use some alternative presentation software. Has anybody ever heard of Prezi? Handful of people. Who, who, who likes Prezi? Ma'am, your hand won't go down on this. You must love Prezi. Um, I used Prezi once in class. Again, it was something new. I said, you know, I found out about this. I'm going to give it a shot. What Prezi is, and, and I have the link to it, Prezi is a, is a free software that's online. It's an alternative presentation software, and it's not really like PowerPoint. It's a little, it's enough different that um, it does provide a different view for your group. When I first took a look at Prezi, I thought, well, Prezi would be really good, maybe the business world, if I was doing like a one-off presentation, because it is kind of different, it's kind of neat. We'll take a look at one in just a second. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. This is one I created for my class, and let me preface this by saying, this is super basic. Um, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to get too in-depth with adding an awful lot of stuff. But when I first did it and took a look at it, I thought, you know, this is kind of neat. Okay. Start it out. Hit play. And then it does this nice little jump to your next one. And then I can get another jump to my next topic. I jump to my next topic. And as you can see, that's what it looked like. This is obviously super simple. It's just one screen. And I think, ma'am, I saw your hands going off. You were explaining what it is. Prezi is just one screen. It's not like the PowerPoint where you may have a handful of slides. And what you can do is, is put the different things you're talking about, maybe not even in quite the same symmetrical type order I did, include some links in there, include some, bits, include some pictures, graphics, include a lot of different things in there to make it kind of jump out a little bit more at you. Um, I gave this a shot. I thought, you know, it's, it's not the PowerPoint that I'm rolling out every week. It looks a little bit different. So, again, I tried this once. And, and I'll say right now, before I get into my pros and cons with it, they could have cared less. Um, this one didn't seem to come across very well. Um, maybe it's because I didn't put enough time into it. Maybe because I had it a little too simple. I didn't throw too many bells and whistles out there. But they were like, yeah, this is a great review. Let's move on to what we're going to talk about. Um, as for the pros with this, it is different. It is not PowerPoint. It's something a little bit different. And that basic one I did was pretty easy to create. They have a little device up in the top corner that helps create things. Um, wasn't all that difficult to do something very simple. Some of the cons for me... This is the strangest thing, this microphone. I've never done this before. I think I've smacked it about three times now. Um, when's the best time to use it? I, I can think of a lot of times to use it. I used it for review. I could use it in a basic class. 
I just decided to use it in a review situation. Another thing with it, and this is what someone mentioned to me when I was showing it one time, um, issues with viewing. They said if you have some maybe vertigo issues or something like that, the things popping at you can be a real problem. And, and she was legitimate with it. She must have run into the same situation before. Um, so, th so there may be some issues like that with it. There are other things out there, Zoho Show, Slide Rocket, that look a lot like PowerPoint, but at least there's some freely available alternatives that are out there. Um, Prezi, I don't know if I'll use it again. I may try to get a little more creative with it. It was something different. That was something that I that found a little interesting to play around with, show it to the students. They didn't seem to care quite as much as maybe I did about it. Ma'am, your hand went up high. Tell us about your Prezi experience. I use it a lot. Okay. Uh, That's, that's very much what I thought about. I kind of like the movement on it also. Um, Ma'am, you had your hand up, and I'll get to you guys in a second. What I would say is I think that's where it's best for is more images. Mm -hmm. Something where it is so much easier to navigate through the slides. Mm -hmm. Because you can see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there are, I guess I don't think it's all that easy to use to create. Hmm. Okay, okay. Fair, fair enough. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you, the person who uses it, do you just use the free or after, I think, a hundred, like after a certain mm. amount of space and you've got to pay for it, do you use, I have a bank account. Okay. Uh, I just wondered if the space was enough. Uh, so, yeah. No. And I'll talk about that with some other stuff, too. With some of this freely available stuff, always ask them about an educational discount. Um, Lady Gaga, my extra normal, they have one. And so they'll, you can end up getting this where you don't end up having to pay for it. Yes, ma'am. I was curious. I assume you, you put this on Twin so the students can look at it later. Does that work? I, you know, I actually didn't put it on Twin. This was one of the few things I did not put out there because, in essence, I don't think I was as proud of it as I should have been. Um, it, 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 mine was pretty simple. You guys have talked about the examples. Yeah. Yes, yes. There. It, it's like your YouTube, anything else. You can link to it from other things. But I just chose not to put it out there because it was, mine was kind of a throwaway example. It was a very basic example. That I'm like, you know, I think they picked this up anyway. I don't think they need my, my slide to pick up the points that I was dealing with. But, That's why I was just wondering if you were using it for something that the students might want to go yeah. look at. Them. Yes, yes, yes. There are ways to save it. Yes, ma'am. Anybody used anything else other than, than maybe Prezi? Something different to get your presentation out there that's been effective? Is there anything else? Yes, sir. Mind manager? How, how, how did that work? I, I've not heard of that one.
Ma'am, you have a decent sized crowd. When's your presentation this afternoon? Let's give you a little shout out. Okay, and 224. Okay, thank you guys, thank you. Okay, let's move on to my last two things I'm going to talk about. This next one, you've already seen already today. Who all has, first, here's my one question for a bunch of lawyers and law school people. Who's seen Extra Normal before? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you have. You saw Extra Normal about a half hour ago. Um, in what other scenario has everyone seen? I've seen two different ones other than what I've done with it. I've seen the... Why, essentially, why are you going to library science school? And I've seen, why are you going to law school? And you probably, I see some heads nodding. It's essentially one person's, why are you going to law school? I want to save the world. You're crazy. You're going to have a bunch of debt, and you're never going to get a job. And that's essentially, it's the same thing with both of them. And, and when I first saw this and first thought about using this in class, excuse me? Oh, I think I had some echo from my microphone. Um, when I first saw this, I, I thought, well, that's kind of funny. That may work in class. I may be able to add something in there. Um, you saw how my Lady Gaga at the very beginning. Um, a couple of you all chuckled a little bit. The title Lady Gaga got at least probably some people in here today. Um, it at least drew some attention, at the very least. What are my pros with, with Extra Normal? None of my pros with Lady Gaga. Who cares? Um, I think it's kind of creative. I mean, we'll talk more about it in a minute. Has, has anybody created any extra normal videos? Just a couple of people? Did anybody, did anybody do it for, I'll say, professional reasons, like what I'm doing here? <laughs> okay, that, we lost one hand on that. Um, yeah, okay, yes. Ma'am, what did you use extra normal for? And I'll obviously talk about mine too, but. I actually used it in a, a presentation uh, on using video uh, uh, and why, actually, I thought it didn't work. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Well, well, let me tell you about my experience with Extra Normal. I, I had run into it, I saw it, and I thought, you know, I think I can make that work somehow. And, and again, maybe it's a topic thing, but I said, I think I can make that work somehow. I used this twice in class, and I always used it to introduce a topic, kind of a Haha, <laughs> here's a funny way to introduce a topic we're going to be talking about. Um, again, my legal research classes, the first time I used it, I decided I, at the beginning of my classes for about the first half of the semester, I spent about five minutes or so talking about something different than what we were going to talk about that day. Like maybe we talked about PACER one day, or we talked about something, something just a little different outside the topic of the class. And so one day I was talking about recorder auditor's office, essentially the property record offices in a particular state. I said, yeah, we'll throw this out there for a couple minutes. I had Abraham Lincoln do the discussion and just say, hey, here's what an auditor's office does. Here's what a recorder's office does. The amazing thing about it, I don't think anyone in the class had seen Extra Normal before. So immediately, they started laughing at it. But they all paid attention. And at the end of class, to show what they do in class, several people said, well, we all went on the auditor's website and found out some professor's houses or, or did something or another like that. So they had obviously paid attention to what was in the video. And again, it was an introductory type thing, and it was new to them, but they did pay attention to it. And I think that's some of the pros with Extra Normal. I think it is creative. I mean, it is a cartoon. Essentially, you, you do the typing on it. Let me explain a little bit about Extra Normal. You get into the website, you make a movie. You get in to make the movie, you use extra normal points to pay for the various things, the characters, the background, and then you type in the script to it yourself. Um, very, very simple to do. It is creative, and it's amazingly, like I just said, new to students. I was, I was amazed. I mean, I thought 22, 23 year olds, they're going to know everything. I, none of them had seen it before, and I was very, even like, even a non professional use of it they had not seen before. So it definitely caught their attention. Some of the cons to it, I'm, I'm a little worried it may be gimmicky. I'm afraid five years from now, if I'm still showing these extra normal videos, they may throw rotten tomatoes at me. I mean, it may be done. And then the thing I think about with this is when I started working in the library three and a half years ago, I went to a training session on Second Life. Gone. 
So I was a little worried about this, but good thing, essentially free for me. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. And this can take a little bit of time to master. I haven't talked a lot about the intricacies of extra normal, but when I typed this out, I had to figure out about 10 different ways to spell Cali. Just putting C-A-L-I didn't sound anything like Cali. Lady Gaga, if I just did G-A-G-A, -G -A, she's Lady Georgia, Georgia. <laughs> so you have to figure out ways to spell things a little bit different. You may have noticed she paused an awful lot. I was trying to stick pauses in there because if I didn't, blah, 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 blah. It's super fast. The cameras, you can still, I was kind of working with the cameras and fooling with it. To get really good videos, it can take a little bit of time to master. I'll say that one of my coworkers created a hilarious one that he, I think he showed in class and then he bagged it, but it was really good. I know one of our professors at the law school uses this, these in her class, and I've seen some of them and they're fabulous. They are really well done. She says she spends about an hour on them. I kind of question that hour, an hour a day for a week maybe. But um, she, they are fabulous, and I've seen them, and they're good quality videos. Mine are pretty simple, pretty much throwing them out there. Um, I've enjoyed this. I've used it twice. They enjoyed it both times. If I had used it five or six times, I'm not so sure how it would have gone over. I wonder if they would have tuned me out after a while, even with the topic I was dealing with. And again, I was using this as kind of an introduction to something, and hoping to get some discussion coming out of it, and it usually did. It usually worked well for that reason. I'll mention a couple of other things with this. Extra Normal does provide an educational discount. Like you, like you mentioned about Prezi and, and costing money, if you contact Extra Normal, you get, you're given 300 points, which will essentially create a super simple video. If you contact them, say, hey, I work at this, I do this, they probably see the EDU coming off your email. They gave me 5,000 points and said, if I need more, just let them know. So that, I could make videos for days off 5,000 points. So you can do it for free, essentially. And it was kind of fun. Another thing, the length of the videos, and I'll talk about this with my last thing also. My Lady Gaga was pretty short at the beginning. I, whenever I've done any of these things, I've tried to keep them under two minutes. That's kind of been my cutoff. And two minutes goes fast. It's quick, because I think after two minutes, from talking with my students, tuning me out. They're, I'm going to lose them anyway. So I've got to keep it pretty short. And it, it's the editing. I've got to edit what I'm writing. So I've got to make sure I keep it short, concise, and get my points in super quick, or I'm going to lose everybody in the class. So that's a couple of points with Extra Normal. Anybody, any questions with it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I have a question. In terms of, you know, you see on YouTube all these videos that the students make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there any thought, have you or has anyone here ha allowed the students to turn in assignments in this type of format or for presentations in class? I, I, I have not. Um, it would be very creative. And I've heard of some undergraduate classes and, and some times when I've talked about these things before, letting them create things like this or do their own videos, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about. So yes, I mean, I've seen it in other situations. And I can see the students being probably way more creative than I am with some of this stuff. Yes, sir. One, one, of, our professors. one of our professors does that, has mm -hmm. them create videos. But I tell her, show me the courts where you can file your briefs as a video. Ah. Show me, you know, yeah, yeah, where your plaintiffs will let you file a video. And, and, and fair enough, fair enough. I mean, that, the, the reason I do these is, is more of a learning thing. I know this isn't something that they're going to do down the line. But again, I'm, I'm looking at can they retain what we're talking about? Can I do something to make it creative, to get them to talk about it, and things like that? Yes, ma'am. I was just going to ask, when we first looked at this, um, it looked like you could only have one or two characters. Mm -hmm. With the educator discount, can you add more characters? I, I, I've only seen the two. And I know they have two different features. They have one called the Movie Maker, and then there's another one that I think is the more advanced. I think that would be what you're talking about. And, I, you know, I don't know if the educational discount goes into that one or not. I've kept it on the simple and cheap end. You may have noticed that's another running theme through what I've dealt with here. Um, to try to keep them things expen inexpensive. Anyone else? I I've enjoyed this. Um, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just like, ooh, this is kind of fun. Um, and, I and I think in, this, in what I've done with it, it has helped as a learning experience. OK, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is something I've, I've really had a lot of fun with. Um, I've created some instructor 
I've created myself some video hypotheticals and used in my class. <clears throat> and, and the big thing with my legal research classes is we do in-class work. I meet for 50 minutes. I may talk for 25 or 30 of it. The rest of it, I want to do stuff in class. I want them to touch the resources that they're learning how to use. And so I've always used some type of hypothetical in class to get them into things. And it usually was just me typing something on a PowerPoint, giving them a handout, something like that. I said, well, let's make some videos. Let's use some characters. Let's have some people show up. Let's actually do some talking to get them to talk about things. And I actually did this seven times in my class out of my 14 classes. And I don't think I got the burnout factor with them. Now, if it had been in all 14, yeah, I may have. But I, I tried to maybe every other class, we would do some type of hypothetical to introduce a particular topic. So what I'm going to do is show you one of them. It's about two minutes long. Um, tell me what you think about it. I've, I've shown this to two groups now and had two different opinions on it. Um, usually it would be me playing an attorney in a firm, telling them a question. It may be my wife and son as clients talking about something. I actually got one of my coworkers to do one one day. I showed up in his office about 10 minutes, about 10 minutes before we did. I said, here's a short script, and here's the resources I want you to hold up. I'm going to be back in 10 minutes. I'm going to film you for a couple of minutes. Um, kind of scared him to death at first. And then after we did it, he's like, I'll help you with that again if you want me to. So I think he wants to be a movie star now. So, so let me set this up a little bit. Business and tax legal research. We were dealing with the tax end of the class at this point, and I wanted them to use maybe CCH, RIA, government website, some type of research database to find some revenue rulings. So I threw this together to try to get them to, to retain some facts and then to look up the basic information. Take a look at it and tell me what you guys think of it. That was one of my videos, one of my video hypotheticals. I have my thoughts on it. What, what did you guys think of it? Does anybody do anything like this in class? Uh, I've seen a professor walking around the building that, that does this type of thing in class. And <clears throat> I think, I think it's, a, it's a class that lends itself to a lot of discussion. Um, what did you guys think of that? Be harsh. I don't mind a bit. Yes, sir. I think it'd be more effective to use somebody other than the instructor as the person that's giving them this because they don't see you as a, as a as an attorney in a firm environment, even though you've had experience doing that. That's a very good point. And, and generally, I did try to round up some other people. Um, but there were a couple times when I maybe time commitments talking about way too much stuff. I didn't want to stick it on somebody else. I ended up doing it myself. That's a very good point. Um, one thing about it, um, that, that when, I, when I initially did it, um, 
I thought there was too much information in there. I thought, boy, I'm talking about a lot of different stuff. Um, asking them about find X, Y, Z, go through that. And I mentioned that to a group, and they were like, no, make the students go through it. Make them figure out what's important that they need to learn, what they need to gather out of that to do their research. So that, that was one thing with me. And that was one of the reasons I was afraid to throw this on my coworker next to me and ask him to do it. He may, it may take us all day for him to remember what I was trying to look for. So that was, that's a, that's a very legitimate point, trying to find other people to be my characters. Yes, sir, you had a question back there. Or, Yeah, yep. That, that, that's one of the key things with it. I mean, and it kind of goes with what you were mentioning earlier, sir, about, well, you can't film one of these videos and turn it into a court. Well, let's say they had a client come in. Let's say one of the partners told them something kind of pretty quick like that. Are they going to go back an hour later and go, you know, I kind of missed on that? Well, you would hope they would, but, but they may not. The opportunity may not be there. So it, as much as they can gather gather it. Now, of course, I would, they may say, wait, we kind of missed something. I said, well, let's talk about that again. I wasn't going to be too harsh with it. But generally, I wanted them to pick up on it, to try to gather the keywords, do their searches, and pick up on something. So that, that was kind of a, a plan with it. Yes, sir? Um, to add to the buzzword concept, um, I, I know sometimes people get a lot out of having multiple visual elements going mm -hmm. on. If you wanted to go one more step, you could dump it into a editing program and when a buzzword came up, you could put it up on the side, and that sort of highlights the well, text a little bit. As we are running out of time, he has hit on one of my big points with all this. Um, as for my pros, I, I found these somewhat easy to create. I kept them pretty simple. Um, I'm going to skip the marketing part for a second. I think these can expand to other projects, and I think that's what you're getting at in a bit. Um, there is a librarian at Ohio University pretty close to where we're at who is the business librarian at Ohio University. And he has a website, he has a wiki, and on it he has biz research videos. And he has some of these short little videos of himself kind of talking about a particular database, something like that. And he has incorporated some of the editing features included what you're talking about in there. For what I was doing, um, I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I wanted them to pull some facts out. If I was making this something a little more in depth, maybe if I was going to put it on our twin page and have them do something out of class, then that may be the situation for some of these basic editing tools to put some more information in there. I think there's definitely a place for that. And that's something kind of my expansion, my next step with these, is to try to do some more editing with them, to get a little more in depth, to add that, that value added feature to them to make them a little more useful. Um, <clears throat> But that's, that's some of my positives with it. I also think these are good at essentially, along with extra normal, everything else I've been talking about, kind of from a marketing standpoint, particularly for us in the library, to kind of say, hey, we're out here. Here's what we can do. Here's how we can break PowerPoint, um, how we can do all kinds of things. Um, and, and I'll just move on from that. A couple of the cons with this that, that I found in my situation is trying to find a, a proper mix of Am I overloading it? Am I challenging them enough? Am I spoon feeding them too much? Am I telling them too much? Should I leave a little bit more out of it to get more discussion going? It is that. And then sometimes the editing features you're talking about, sir, they may become a little more time consuming. They could become expensive. I know there are some freely available ones that are out there that I've, I've played around with a bit. But um, there are some situations out there where it could get a little more expensive. My last thing with this, length of the videos, you've got to keep them somewhat short because you're going to lose interest. If it gets over a couple minutes, everybody's tuning you out. Um, and after, when I would, sometimes when I get to a minute, they're tuning me out. But um, you've got to keep them fairly short. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Creative idea. Like, if you wanted to bypass the uh, editing, you could do the in access. Yeah. Props are really um, well. This, That's right. You, you're actually right about that. The, um, oh, the, guy, the gentleman from Ohio University, Chad Bodinger, I think. I've mentioned him at a couple of these presentations I've done. Word may get back to him. I'm talking about him. They're really good, and he does that. And I think, I think for him being a business librarian, he's probably embedded in a room somewhere and could technically not see anybody ever. He's putting these videos out, essentially selling himself, saying, hey, Here's some stuff. And he'll, he'll have signs up. He'll have post-it notes showing stuff. And I, I think it's a really creative 
and, and probably a very useful way for him to get himself out there to his patrons, to who he's dealing with. Um, I didn't want to get too library, library out there on you because I know a lot of this crowd's not librarians. But, um, but I, I think this, this tool works both in the classroom and can work in a lot of other places too, particularly in the library. I, mean, I think there's a lot of places for this. Okay, to wrap it up, this has become my, my mantra with this. Um, don't be afraid to try something new. I just showed you guys a video of me talking. There's about, what, 50 or 60 people in here? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Um, I think this has been a good opportunity to market the whatever. Let's say you're teaching evidence. Let's say, or maybe not the most, let's say you're teaching the most boring subject in law school, which there aren't any, but, um, and word gets out, you know, He's showing some videos of, that are really good learning tools. He used Prezi. It was pretty good. She used this. You may have 80 people in your class instead of 20 next time. I mean, I, I expected 10 or 15 people to show up for this, and this room's full. So, so that kind of makes me feel good. Maybe I've marketed the library. I don't know what I've done. And I've always tried to keep things useful and beneficial. I've tried not to do it just for the sake of necessarily doing it. If I, if I thought that was the case, I would stop trying it. I've tried to keep them useful. I haven't just done them to be doing them. I always wanted to use them in a useful situation. With that said, my name again is Thomas Sneed. I'm at the Moritz Law Library at Ohio State. My email is sneed.30. I, I tried to put this PowerPoint on Cali, and it wouldn't let it. So um, I was more than willing to put it out there, but I couldn't get it on there for some reason. If you guys have any questions or any, any words of wisdom or rotten, rotten tomatoes to throw at me, Shoot me an email, I don't mind a bit. And, and again, thank you guys, this is great. Got a huge crowd. There are things posted in sessions. And, and you know, I try, I may have to do something like that. It wouldn't take my PowerPoint. And so I'm going to have to fool with it. And I was in a hurry and running around and just didn't fool with it. Thank <clears throat>